<laughs> oh, hi, friends. This is your old pal, Papa Dale. Now, I'm a retired pastor, teacher, and theologian professor, having served the Lord Jesus Christ for over 50 years. My name is Dale Warren, but my friends call me Papa Dale. Now, you can see the details on other videos uh, of my life on this channel about my personal testimony, family life, education, and ministry experiences. So, we won't take time for that now. And for now, we'll just go right to the topic for the day. And the topic for the day is... <laughs> the Minor Prophets. This is the JHI, the Jan Hess Institute, Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Literature degree program. And this is the lecture on the Minor Prophets. Now, the terms major prophets and minor prophets are simply a way to divide the Old Testament prophetic books. The major prophets include Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. The minor prophets consist of Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. And these twelve are sometimes collectively referred to as the twelve. The Hebrew Bible, or Tanakh, is divided into three sections, the Torah, books of Moses, the Nevi'im, the prophets, and the Ketuvim, the writings. The books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel are part of the Nevi'im, while Lamentations and Daniel are included in the Ketuvim. Now, minor prophets, despite their shorter length, hold significant value. They foretell Christ's birth, Micah 5.2, his atoning sacrifice, and his return, uh, and we can see that in Zechariah 14.4, and they also reveal God's holiness, wrath, grace, and mercy. You can see that in, in Hosea 11.8-9 and Micah 7, verses 18 and 19. Although often overlooked due to their complex language and stern message, both the major and the minor prophets offer profound insights into God's character and his plans for humanity, making them essential for study and reflection. Major prophets are called major just simply due to the length of their books, and minor prophets are called minor just because the books are shorter and their messages are more narrowly focused. They aren't less inspired. Hosea and Zechariah, for instance, are nearly as long as Daniel. The distinction lies in the volume of the revelation given by God. And Now here is an overview of each of the minor prophets in the Christian Bible. Hosea. Hosea's enacted prophecy is marked by his troubled marriage, symbolizing God's relationship with Israel. Hosea's wife, Gomer, represents Israel's unfaithfulness, while Hosea embodies God's enduring love and willingness to restore his people despite their infidelity and idolatry. You see, Gomer is a prostitute, and Yahweh specifically tells Hosea to marry this prostitute. And so this will serve as an example, an enacted prophecy before the people of Israel. That's the point. Then, uh, the next book is the book of Joel. Joel's prophecy focuses on a devastating locust plague, symbolizing an impending divine judgment. He calls for repentance and promises God's restoration and blessing. Joel also foresees the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a prophecy later cited by Peter in the New Testament on the day of Pentecost. Then there is Amos. Amos is a shepherd from Judah. He, condem he condemns Israel's social injustices and religious hypocrisy. His messages emphasize God's demand for justice and righteousness. Amos warns of impending judgment, but also offers hope for future restoration for those who seek the Lord and amend their ways. Then there is Obadiah, and Obadiah's brief prophecy addresses the downfall of Edom, Israel's neighbor and rival. 
He condemns Edom for its arrogance and mistreatment of Israel during times of crisis. Now, Obadiah's message underscores the theme of divine justice and the ultimate triumph of Yahweh's kingdom. Then there is the book of Jonah. Jonah is the name of the prophet who is sent to the wicked city of Nineveh, the city in Assyria, to call for repentance. Initially, fleeing from God's command is what Jonah did. And eventually, Jonah delivers the message, leading to Nineveh's repentance. The story highlights God's mercy and compassion, even for those outside Israel in the need for obedience. And we need to uh, give a little more information about Jonah as he tried originally to flee from God's command, and he did so because he just knew, he just knew that if he preached to Nineveh that they would repent, and he didn't want them to repent, he wanted God's judgment to fall on them. And so he went to sea on a boat. There was a great storm. He was cast into the sea, and he was swallowed by some huge fish. And he was stuck in this fish for several days. Three days, in fact until he repented and God had the fish throw up on the land and uh, he he was thrown up alive. He came out alive. Of course, God can do that. Now there is also Micah. Micah speaks against the corruption and the injustice of Israel and Judah. He prophesies the destruction of Samaria and Jerusalem, but also foretells the birth of a ruler in Bethlehem, Jesus. Micah emphasizes the importance of justice, mercy, and humility in one's walk with God. Then there is Nahum. Nahum pronounces the continuing judgment on Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, for its cruelty and its wickedness. Unlike Jonah, who preached repentance, Nahum's message is one of inevitable destruction. His prophecy underscores God's sovereignty and justice, in dealing with oppressive nations. Then there is the minor prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk dialogues with God, questioning why evil persists and why Babylon, an even more wicked nation, is used to punish Judah. God's response emphasizes living by faith and assurance and assures that divine justice will prevail. Habakkuk's prayer reflects trust in God's ultimate plan. Then there is Zephaniah. Zephaniah warns the coming day of the Lord, a time of severe judgment on Judah and surrounding nations due to idolatry and sin. He calls for repentance and promises that a remnant will be saved. Zephaniah's prophecy concludes with a vision of restoration and joy. Then there is the minor prophet Haggai. Haggai encourages the returned exiles to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, rebuking their neglect and urging them to prioritize God's house. His messages emphasize the blessings that come from obedience and the significance of the temple in restoring proper worship and community. Then we come to Zechariah. Zechariah's visions and promises in prophecies encourage the rebuilding of the temple and offer hope for the future. He foresees the coming of the Messiah and the establishment of God's kingdom. Zechariah's messages blend immediate concerns with long-term messianic expectations. Malachi is the last of the the minor prophets, and Malachi addresses the spiritual apathy of post-exilic Israel, challenging the priests and the people to return to faithful worship and covenantal obedience. He speaks of God's love, the coming judgment, the future arrival of a messenger to prepare the way for the Lord, and that would have been John the Baptist. Now, the Minor Prophets, also known as the Book of the Twelve, encompass a variety of themes reflecting God's relationship with his people and the world. And here are the major themes in the Minor Prophets. The theme of divine judgment. Hosea says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4.6 
And Amos says, Therefore thus says the Lord, An adversary shall surround the land and bring down your defenses from you, and your strongholds shall be plundered. Amos 3.1 Then there's Obadiah. The pride of your heart has deceived you, but you shall be cut off forever. Obadiah 1, 3 through 4 and verse 10. And then there's Micah. Therefore, I will make Samaria a heap in the open country. Micah 1, 6. Nahum says, Behold, I am against you, declares the Lord of hosts, and I will burn your chariots in smoke. Nahum 2, 13. Habakkuk, sa Habakkuk says, For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. Habakkuk 1, verse 6. Zephaniah says, The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fa fast. It's coming quick. Zephaniah 1, 14. And then there is Malachi, for behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven. Malachi 4, 1. These all speak of divine judgment. Then there is the call to repentance among the minor prophets. Joel says, Yet even now declares the Lord, Return to me with all your heart. See Joel 2.12. Jonah and the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth. Repentance. Jonah 3.5. Micah says, He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. See Micah verse, chapter 6, verse 8. Then there is the call to repentance of Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, who do his just command. Zephaniah 2.3 and then there is the call to repentance of Haggai. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, Haggai 1.5. And also Malachi, return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts, Malachi 3.7. These are all calls to repentance. And then there is a common theme, God's love and compassion. In Hosea, God says, I will heal their apostasy. I will love them freely. Hosea 14, 4. Jonah says, And should not I pity Nineveh, that great city? Jonah 4, 11. And God's love and compassion is seen in Micah. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression? Micah 7, 18. There is also the theme of social justice. Amos says, But let justice roll down, those, roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Amos 5.24 And regarding social justice, Micah says, Woe to those who devise wickedness and work evil on their beds. Micah 2.1 Then there is the restoration and hope. And in Joel, Restoration and Hope, Joel says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. Joel 2.25 In Amos, it says, In that day I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen. In Amos 9.11 In Micah, God says, He shall stand and the shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord. Micah 5.4 Zephaniah says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. Zephaniah 3.14 Haggai says, The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. Haggai 2.9 Zechariah says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Zechariah 9.9. 9. And then we have Malachi. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. Malachi 4.2. And these all are speaking of the themes of restoration and hope. 
And then there is the theme of the day of the Lord. Joel says the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Joel 2.31 And Amos says of the day of the Lord, Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord! Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. Amos 5.18 Obadiah says, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. Obadiah 1.15 Zephaniah says, The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. Zephaniah 1.14 And in Malachi, God says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Malachi Four, five. So these are all themes about the day of the Lord. Excuse me. <coughs> then you have another theme in the Minor Prophets of covenant faithfulness. Hosea says, I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. Hosea 2.20 Micah says, He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, 8. And covenant faithfulness is spoken of in Malachi. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, O children of Jacob, you are not consumed. Malachi 3, 6. And then you have the theme of the messianic promises, prophecies. Micah says, but you, O Bethlehem Ephrata, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel. Micah 5, 2. Then there is the messianic prophecy in Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And messianic promise number 3, Malachi says, Behold, I send my messenger and will prepare the way before me. Malachi 3, 1. These themes highlighted by specific biblical citations show the depth and breadth of the messages conveyed by the minor prophets. So just to review, these themes of the minor prophets include 1. Divine judgment. 2. A call to repentance. 3. God's love and compassion. 4. Social justice. 5. Restoration and hope. 6. The Day of the Lord. 7. Covenant Faithfulness. 8. Messianic Prophecies. And so, this has been your old pal, Papa Dale, and I've been your host in this lecture on the Minor Prophets. And so, I will remind you that if you are that you are intending to earn the Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Literature degree, that you must Read through these notes, whether you do it on the video transcript, whether you do it in the video notes section below this video, or whether you do it in the comments section below this video. Any of those are fine, but you must read these comments, and you must look up all the Bible citations unless they are two chapters or more. If they're just one chapter and a bunch of verses, look them up. Now, the importance of that is that Learning comes by repetition, and so don't skip. Now, uh, also, well, no, that's it. That's everything I wanted to say. So, if the Lord allows, I will return for another video. And until that time, I promise you that I will be praying for you, that you will be well, and that you will be blessed. <laughs>